Hello, everyone. I hope uh, I hope this coming Shabbat is fulfilling and restful and healing for all. Now, as we prepare for Shabbat, we at the Shar we want to share teaching with you, inspiration with you, to bring us into Shabbat and into into the week. This past week, uh, we observed, and so many around the world observed the art side of one of the the greatest leaders of of our times of the previous generation, Lubavitcher Rebbe, who passed away in 1994, and it. And it goes without saying that his inspiration, his influence continues to be felt around, around the world. And one of my favorite anecdotes, favorite stories about, about the Rebbe is, or tells the story of the Rebbe was walking along, and I've heard a few different versions of the story, but the Rebbe was walking along around in Crown Heights in the neighborhood and came across a, a young boy with, with his father, and the Rebbe started in, in, in conversation, engaging them in conversation, and, and asked the boy, you know, what do, what do you like? What are your interests in life? And the boy said, well, I'm, I'm passionate about, about baseball. I'm a baseball fan. The Rebbe said, with the Yankees or the Dodgers? Oh, the Dodgers, it was Brooklyn. And the Rebbe said, well, well, tell me a little bit about what you like about, about the game. And the boy started to describe the game. And the Rebbe said, well, let me ask you, if the score is, the score is lopsided in one way or the other, let's, see, let's say that one team is winning 9-1 to one and, it's, and it's the seventh inning. So what, what, do, what do the people do? What do the fans do? What do the fans do? And, and the boy said, well, if it's that lopsided and it's the late innings, well, then the, the fans go home. And the Rebbe said, well, but what do, the, what do the players do if the score is lopsided? And the boy said, well, the players, uh, they have to stay, of course. They, they, they continue to play until, until the end. And the Rebbe said, well, this is the great decision in life. Are you a spectator or are you a player? Do you give up at some point when things aren't going your way? Or, or do you continue? Do you continue to play? Do you continue to work hard until the end of the game? I think it's a, it's a beautiful lesson, certainly taking the reality of baseball and, and, and the youth's interest in, in something that's relevant and contemporary and understanding that there are eternal lessons in, in everything that we do and everything that we see. And I want to offer one other lesson that relates to, to baseball or, or at least to the, this analogy that, that baseball reflects or that, or that sport reflects life. Because in, in sport, often in, in many sports, there's the concept of team. Not every sport is a team sport, but many sports, the concept is the, is the team. And the essence, what we hear athletes say, even after a great performance, as long as the team wins, that's what, that's what I care about. And there's a, a really beautiful teaching to this effect on our Torah portion this week, which speaks of, of the rebellion of Korach. And Korach, of course, from the, the tribe of, of Levi, similar to Moshe, and he, he challenges Moshe's leadership. And the, the, the portion begins... Vayikach Korach, that Korach took, and it doesn't say exactly exactly what he took. And there's a, a really beautiful insight of the Kedusha Slevi, and and he wrote very beautiful Vayikach Korach. Let's listen to his words. What did Korach, what did Korach take? So the Kedusha Slevi said that that there is this idea of of the righteous, and the righteous has an interest in only bringing pleasure to God. And he writes, the Eitzel Zehat Sadiq, and this righteous person who has his eye on, on, on the goal and, and certainly has his, his priorities straight, only wants to bring pleasure to God. Veitzel Zehat Sadiq, Ein Chiluk, there's no difference, he wrote, Im hu, baruch, whether this person brings pleasure to God, O Tzadik Acher, or maybe some other righteous person does what God wants and brings pleasure and, and, and nachas to, to the Almighty. Doesn't matter who does it, as long as it gets done. But for other people, somebody who's really interested in earning reward and doesn't really have the right priorities in mind and thinks that life is only about gaining for themselves and you do the right thing so that you can be rewarded yourself and not for the objective goal of doing the right thing for their for their own sake. This this other person who has compromised morals, this person wants the credit for themselves. They don't want simply want it done, but they want to be the ones who, who do it. And the Kedusha Slevi says, this is Korach, Vayikach Korach, and Korach took. What do you mean he took? Sheratza shehu yikach velo acher. He wanted that he would be the one to take and not anyone else. He wanted the credit. He wanted the glory for getting the job done, for leading the people, and not allow simply the objective that the people will be led and the people will be well and the people will be successful, those larger objectives. He wasn't invested in that. He was invested only in his own, in the credit that he would, he would receive. And the lesson here 
the lesson understanding that life is like this team collective and understanding that the objective is is to win is to succeed it's not about who gets credit it's it's just important that the job gets done and i think uh certainly in these times where we understand the overall value is is not personal success but simply that we're all in this together and only by staying together and only by keeping these objectives in mind and not wanting personal credit but understanding that there's a larger goal can we uh can we keep uh, a sense of of unity and cohesion amongst uh amongst people as we all try and as we all move towards the same or similar goals of doing the right thing and bringing bringing nachas and bringing pride to the almighty wish everyone a shabbat shalom shabbat shalom one of my favorite times of day is shabbat afternoon the last few hours of the day of rest when after a morning of a beautiful service a celebration of a bar mitzvah and a nice Shabbos nap, we wake up and it's time for yet another meal, Seudah Shlishit, the third meal of Shabbat. One of the traditions associated with Seudah Shlishit is the singing of a few Zmirot, and in particular beginning them with Psalm 23, Mizmor le David. I love this Mojit's melody. It puts me in the mood to relax over the last few hours of Shabbat. Join along with me. Mizmor le David, Hashem rohi lo echsar, Binot deshe yar bitzeni, Al mei menuchot yenadeni. Nafshi yeshovev, Nafshi yeshovev, Yan cheni v'magelei tzedek v'man shemo. Kam ki erech begeitz al mavet. Lo irara ki ata imadi. Shivetecha umishanetecha. Shivetecha umishanetecha. Hey, ma yenachamuni. Taroch lefanai shulchan. Taroch lefanai shulchan. Taroch lefanai shulchan. Neged tzorerai. Dishanta v'ashem en roshi. Dishanta v'ashem en roshi. Dishanta. Anta v'ashem en roshi kos yirevaya ach tov ach tov v'chesed yirdefuni kol yemei chaya. Veshavti, veshavti, veshavti beveit Hashem leorech yamim. Idi da ida ida ida, idi da ida ida ida, idi da ida 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 ida. Idi da ida ida ida. Di da 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 da, ya da 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 da. Shabbat shalom.